Today I'm going to show you how to write equations from word problems and then we're also going to talk about the meanings of slope and y-intercept in word problem equations. When you are writing equations for word problems, here are some key things to think about. Your y-intercept in the word problem is your initial amount or the one-time amount, maybe a one-time fee. Your slope is the thing that happens over and over again. Look for words like per or each. All right, let's take a look at four word problems and see how we do. A gym membership has a $20 enrollment fee and costs $40 per month. Write an equation that represents the cost y after x months of joining the gym. All right, what's the slope? What's the thing that happens per? Do you see the word per right here? $40 per month. So that's my 40. And then we had an enrollment fee, a one-time fee. Did you guys see that? That's 20. So now all I have to do is say y equals my slope times x plus my y-intercept. Hmm, not too hard. Here's another one. After a baby was born, she began to gain weight at a rate of 1.5 pounds per month. The weight of the baby at birth was 12 pounds. Write an equation for W in terms of T, representing weight in pounds of the newborn baby T months after birth. So what's the slope? What's happening over and over again? Well, that's the 1.5 pounds per month. All right. What was the initial amount, the starting amount? Well, the baby was born at 12 pounds. One thing to watch out for is that usually we're used to writing y equals our slope times x and then our y-intercept. In this case, they're not using y and x, they're using w and t. So we just need to use what they asked for. So I'm going to say w equals 1.5t plus 12. A town has a population of 5,000 residents, but that population is decreasing by 20 people each year. Write an equation that represents the population y after x years. Well, what's my slope? What's happening over and over again? Well, the population is decreasing by 20 people each year. But what does decreasing by 20 look like as a number? Well, if you said minus 20, you are correct. And then the town has a population of 5,000 residents. That was our starting point. So that's our y-intercept. I would write it y equals negative 20x plus the 5,000. However, there is another correct way to write this, and that is to put the y-intercept first. So I could say y equals 5,000, that's what we started with, minus 20 residents per year. Stop the video, do this one on your own, and then come back and see how correct you are. Mandy just lit a new candle and then let it burn all the way down to nothing. The initial length of the candle is 14 inches and the candle burned at a rate of 1.25 inches per hour. Write an equation for L in terms of T representing the length of the candle remaining unburned in inches T hours after the candle was lit. So what's the rate? I mean, they actually said rate. <laughs> that was the 1.25. But it is what? Shrinking, decreasing. So for me, that's a negative 1.25. Alrighty, now the y-intercept. Where did the candle start? Well, the initial length, 14. All right, so here we go. Uh, I want to say y, but that's not it. They want to say write an equation for L. So L equals negative 1.25t plus a 14. And again, you might have written it the other way. And I kind of like it this way, where I have L equals 14, the height of the candle, minus 1.25 inches per hour. Sometimes you're given the story problem, you're given the equation, and you're asked to give the meaning of the slope or the y-intercept. And so it's kind of the same stuff I, I've said before, but I added a couple things. The y-intercept is where your story started. It's the initial amount, the one-time only amount. Your slope is the rate. It's what's happening over and over again. Or if that's hard to see, it's the dependent variables label over the independent variables label. In other words, your y per your x. Let's look at some examples. Chris is a member of a gym. He pays a monthly fee plus a per visit fee. The equation of y equals 3x plus 10 represents the monthly amount Chris pays for his membership to the gym 
per month for X visits. Oof. What is the y-intercept? Well, just look at the equation. It's the number that's being added or subtracted to your x, which is your 10. What's your slope? Well, that'd be the three that's multiplying your x. But what do they mean? Well, let's start with the 10. The 10 is this initial amount. In fact, it's right here. He pays a monthly fee right here. And so 10 is our monthly fee. He pays a monthly fee of $10. What's the three stand for? Well, that's how much money he pays per visit. How do I know it's a per visit fee? Because it tells me right there, per visit fee. Jasmine is earning money to go to the Washington DC trip. She makes and sells friendship bracelets. The amount of money she makes is computed using the function y equals 2x minus 20. Well, what is my y-intercept? You notice there, that's a negative 20. Huh, I wonder what that means. Let's go on, what's the slope? Two. All right, let's go back to the negative 20. If everything here is about money, that's money that she's lost. What do you think she's, how do you think she's losing $20? Well, if you said that she spent the money on materials for the friendship bracelets, you are right. So what about the two? And again, if this is making money and it's per, it's per bracelet. She is selling them for $2 per bracelet. Well, what do you think? All right, let's do another. John is going to the amusement park where he has to pay a set price of admission and another price for tickets to go on each of the rides. The total amount of money John will spend is given by the equation y equals 20 plus 3x, where y represents the total amount of money in dollars and x, x represents the rides John goes on. All right, what's the y-intercept? 20. What's the slope? 3. Ah, did you catch that? Because 3 was the number that was multiplying times x. That's my slope. All right, what do you think the y-intercept means? Remember, we're talking, this is where the story starts. This is in our initial amount. In this case, he had to pay a set price of emission. So that was $20. What about the three? Well, you see he had to pay another price for the tickets to go on each of the rides. So each ride cost $3. Well, I have a couple more. Are you ready for this? Are you ready to do it on your own? Let's see. Adrian started the day with an existing irrigation pipe. He used the equation L equals 15S plus 120 to determine the total length of the pipe L in feet as new sections of the pipe S were welded on the end. So what is my y-intercept? Well, that's 120. And what's my slope? 15. All right. Now, what is the 120 for? Well, that's how many feet he started with when it says he started the day with an existing irrigation pipe guess how long that was 120 feet now let's look at the slope and i'm going to use this dependent per independent label that i talked about earlier i'm going to start with my dependent label that would be where your y would normally be in this case it's where the l is per where my X would be S, but that doesn't give me very much. So what does the L stand for? Well, if you look at it, determine the total length of the pole L in feet. So it's the length in feet. I'm gonna say feet. And instead of putting my little slash there, I'm gonna say the word per. And then what does the S stand for? Well, new sections of pipe per new section. All right now, can you put together what the slope means? Well, here we go. The slope of 15 means 15 feet were added for each section of new pipe. All right, one more to go. Pause the video on your own, read the story problem, and write down on a piece of scrap paper what you think the y-intercept is and what it means and the slope and what it means. And then come back and let's see if we agree. All right, Laura lights a candle in her kitchen. The height of the candles represented by the equation y equals negative one half x plus six, where x is the time in hours the candle has been burning, and y is the height of the candle in inches. Well, what's my y-intercept? Six. And what's my slope? Negative one half. All right. What does the six stand for? Well, that's the height of the candle before it was lit. Well, what about the slope? Let's look at that dependent label per independent label one more time to show you how that works. And so my dependent label is this Y. What is the Y? Well, the Y is the height of the candle in inches. It says it right there. So it's inches. And then what is my X? 
Well, X is the time in hours, so hours. So basically, it's negative one half inches per hour, or written like this. The height of the candle decreased one half inch per hour. All right, that's it. Now it's your turn to go and try some of this. Have some fun.